Hello and welcome to the Introduction to Allied Health Lecture. This is for Module 1 and as I noted previously in the orientation video, the reading is required prior to starting your module lectures. This week I've included the uh, lecture notes for chapters 1, 2, and 3 and the reading is truly just to give you a an overview, a background of information so that we can dive into topics more in depth. So today I want to talk to you about allied health. So what is allied health? Allied health is the segment of the healthcare field that delivers services involving the identification, evaluation, and prevention of diseases and disorders, and dietary and nutrition services and it also includes rehabilitation and health systems management. This is a growing field and there are actually over 2000 allied health professions. And we probably, if we're just sitting here trying to name a few, we probably could only name about 10 to 12 off the top of our head. And there's many that you've never heard of before. So in this class, hopefully we bring up a few that you really don't know much about. And then we bring up some that you want to know more about or you've already chosen a path for. So 5 million allied health care providers in the United States. They work in more than 80 different professions and they represent about 60% of all healthcare providers. So that's over half, right? The projected growth is to go from 15.6 million to 19.8 million between the years of 2010 and 2020. So we're here in 2020 now. It'd be interesting to see um, how accurate that growth was and in our projected growth for the future, it's one of the most rapidly growing fields. So it is a high need, high wage field. Now, there are categories for the allied health and I like to have you watch my lectures and then in your discussions or your assignments for the week, depending on what it is, I like to do participation. And in order to do this, during my lectures, often you'll hear me ask you questions or highlight things, and then you're going to see those again in that discussion assignment or the regular assignment on your module. So this is the first part and the first time that I will be doing that. And we're going to talk about the two broad categories of allied health. So I I want you to remember that the two broad categories are technicians or assistants and then therapists or technologists. And with that, I want you to think about what jobs might go along with those two broad categories. So again, the two broad categories are technician assistants and therapy, uh, sorry, therapist technologists. So in that discussion board, the first question you're going to see is what are the two broad categories that we discussed during lecture? And give me a couple examples of allied health careers that would fall under each of those two broad categories. Some examples of allied health careers I've listed here are nursing, medical assisting, child life specialists. We also have health information management. So there are lots of IT jobs in allied health, respiratory therapy. How about child life specialists? Have you heard of a child life specialist? Well, they're an amazing job and in my next life, or maybe in my retirement, <laughs> um, I want to be a child life specialist. So hopefully these give you some good examples and then you can investigate further or use your previous knowledge to give me a couple of examples in each of the categories of technicians, assistants, and therapist technologists. Now, a lot of students ask me what I think the qualities that you need to uh, be in the allied health profession. And so I've really thought about it and I narrowed it down to these. Compassion is key and number one, you need to have compassion for others, whether you are in a direct patient job or indirectly working for patients, 
the reason you should be there is compassion because pay is not always the first topic in finding joy in our life. So we want to have compassion for our job as well. Passion for people. Many of the allied health professions are patient care or involve patient care. So you need to have a passion to work with people every day. You definitely need patience. Engagement. And I put this because a lot of allied health professionals are engaging with patients or residents on a regular basis. They're also part of their um, education. So for example, medical assistants and nurses do a lot of patient education and we try to engage our patient in learning in order to help them make the health changes they need or to take their medication correctly or whatever it is that we are counseling them and teaching them on. Critical thinking. Now this is one that you hear across the board all the time in all of your classes, but it really applies to life. And in the allied health professions, you are often put in situations where you really have to think on your toes, take the information you have, critically break it down and think and make a decision or a response. And the last one is collaboration. Most allied health professions in some way or another work on a team, especially nursing, especially medical assisting, respiratory therapy, any of those emergency medical services, you're always working on a team. So it's important that you can communicate and collaborate. So this is the second part of the discussion that we're going to have participation wise. And that is I'm going to, on that assignment, ask you to list the five qualities that I feel are most important. And I told you that those are compassion, passion for people, patience, engagement, critical thinking, and collaboration. And you're probably thinking right now, wait a minute, uh, Carrie Shannon, you cannot add because there are six there. I'm just going to ask you to try to remember five of those, even though I've listed six. So please list what I believe are the qualities. And then I'm going to ask you to choose two additional qualities that you feel are important and tell us why they are important. So again, you will see this in your discussion page this week. Okay, now I'm really going to have your attention because we're going to talk finances for a minute. I want you to write this down somewhere where you can keep it because Oshpod has loan repayments and scholarships in allied health programs, as well as nursing, physicians assisting, and medical doctors. And it's amazing the things that they offer and you just have to like for example on a loan repayment you would do your schooling and then work two years in one of the um, high needs areas that they list and if you put those two years in in one of those areas you can have all of your loans repaid and there are also scholarships that cover cost of school even your laptop etc so i will put a link to this page for you in the module but i also want you to write it down somewhere where you won't just lose it in your notes and forget and think oh my gosh that teacher that you know what was that um put it somewhere where as you're exploring your options for your future career you know where it is and you can continue to revisit to see if it can help you gain finances uh, moving forward now what do we have here at sierra college sierra college is building an amazing allied health program so two years ago now we brought on our allied health general degree and you can get an associate's degree in allied health and this option is designed as a gateway into allied health professions there are a lot that require the two-year degree in order to actually apply. Some of those might be um, if you're looking at occupational therapy or physical therapy, respiratory care, those are some examples where you could utilize your associates to apply for your four-year program. So we do have the Allied Health General as well as the Allied Health 
pre-nursing associate's degree. And in successful completion of this associate in science allied health pre-nursing option, it prepares the student with the knowledge, skills, and qualities necessary to apply to most nursing programs including our own here at Sierra College. Another route you might be taking if you are a nursing student is biological sciences. And then looking here, we have outstanding certificated programs. So we have now phlebotomy, which is a one semester class. And at the end, you will be qualified to sit for your CPT-1 to become a phlebotomist and our medical assisting program which I'm kind of partial to because I am one of the clinical instructors and was involved in starting the program here on campus two years ago. It is an outstanding program. It was developed because our business partners came to us and said, we need a quality program. We need quality medical assistance. And so we created this program at a cost of, you just pay the Sierra College credits and there is a very small lab fee for your stethoscope and blood pressure cuff, as well as a few other, you know, background check and a few other small things throughout and your books. And this compares to many programs that are upwards of twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. So it's it's an amazing opportunity if you're interested in pursuing a medical assisting career. And a medical assisting career can launch you into many other things. A lot of students um, go into uh, applying for PA school because it is the number one direct patient care listed for Stanford and also UC Davis. So the important thing to note on the MA program is there are prerequisites to even get into the program. So I wanted to go over those with you briefly. In order to apply for the medical assisting program here at Sierra College, you already have to have taken and passed this course, Allied Health 20, your Health Sciences 3, which is medical terminology, also applying computer software, health education 2, reading, reasoning, and writing, that's the English N, and the Bio 55, general anatomy and physiology. So your basic English and the general anatomy and physiology. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six for your prerequisites. And I believe actually that this Allied Health 20 isn't listed as a prerequisite, but you are in the class. So you will have taken that towards the medical assisting. If you have more questions about that, you can always feel free to reach out to me and we will have a guest speaker as well down the road. So again, look at all the opportunities you have here for Allied Health. Of course, two options for the nursing, then we also have the general allied health associates degree. That concludes the lecture for today. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day and I will see you online in class. Bye-bye.